Hello and welcome to our mini AG project where we are collecting the mini American Girl dolls and learning about American history by reading all the historical books. We are also crafting for the mini dolls so that they can have furniture and accessories just like the big dolls do and we can experience the world of all the historical dolls this way. Today I'm going to review for you my Addie's bed, which I crafted myself out of different materials and I also made her bedding. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that and show you how I did it. To make mini Addie's bed, I used wooden clothes pins, I used large popsicle sticks for the side rails and this part of the footboard and this part of the headboard. This part of the headboard is another piece made of balsa wood and in my blog there's a pattern for it and you can trace it onto balsa wood and cut it out with an X-Acto knife and then you can use some light grit sandpaper or a nail file works really well for these small projects for just sanding and smoothing the edges. I also used some string to make the rope supports uh, like Addie would have had on her bed at the time. And to make the holes for it I did use a drill with a very small drill bit. I used a combination of tacky glue or hot glue and for the color I used watercolor to stain the bed. I wanted the wood to still show through so I wanted more of a stain rather than paint for this project. This is the watercolor that I used. It's Cotman watercolors. Looks like it's Van Dyke Brown, number 676. If I did this again, I might try to get a lighter color. I was hoping that I could water it down and produce a, a lighter stain, but it still came out pretty dark. So to begin making Addie's bed, I took my four clothes pins and I cut two of them down. Um, these two are three inches tall and the two for the headboard are the same size as the way I bought it. So these two are cut down to three inches and then I cut two large popsicle sticks to five inches and you can see that they're glued together and they are stuck in the gap uh, between in the gap of the clothespin and you can see that it's stuck all the way up to the top of the gap. Now something I didn't mention in the blog is that I did take some popsicle sticks or you could use some scraps of balsa wood also and I filled in the rest of the gap most of the way. So the two five inch popsicle sticks, large popsicle sticks glued together fit in the end of the clothespins to make the footboard and then you're going to do the same for the headboard. Again this we'll do a little bit later. So right now you just have the clothespins and this piece and the clothespins and this piece. I also cut large popsicle sticks to form the side rails of the bed. This one was five inches long, I think, and yes, this one was three inches. And so there were two five inch and two three inch, and I just put them together in opposite ways on the inside, the three inches on this side, and the five inches on this side. And again, I glued them together to form the side rails. You do that twice for each side or once for each side. Now once your pieces are done gluing, you can mark where 
you will drill the holes for the strings. And the dimensions are listed in my blog, but basically I put them one inch apart and just centered them. Um, this is probably a, a little less, maybe a half an inch away from the side, but a little less than one, one inch. Um, so just make sure that they're centered and evenly spaced. On the end, this is about one inch from the side. It's about half an inch to there because the rest of it's stuck in there. And then just evenly spaced across there. And you want to make sure that you drill your holes before you put the bed together because I drilled, forgot to drill my holes when I made Caroline's bed and trying to drill them once the frame was already put together was very hard. So um, try to remember to drill your holes before you put the bed together. Okay, next you can make the headboard. And again, there in my blog, there's a pattern that you can print out and just cut it out inside the black lines. And then you can trace it onto balsa wood and cut it out with an X-Acto knife. And you can sand the edges to make them smooth. Next, you're going to glue the frame together. And in order to do that, I cut a slit in the popsicle stick for the side rail to fit through. I just felt that it would be much stronger to have um, a groove to insert it and rather than just gluing it straight on. Um, and in order to do that, you might find tools such as this wood carving tool helpful for just kind of getting in there and scraping out the wood and making a groove. Um, I just got this cheap set at AC Moore. I'm sure you could get better and more expensive ones, but um, this one worked for me. So after you make your grooves, you can glue your side rails into the headboard and footboard, and then you can glue this more decorative headboard piece into the top and let that dry. Now I also made little supports which you can see here and those are just made of balsa wood and you can just fit them in and I thought it would just again make the bed a little bit sturdier. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the mattress. The pattern for it and the tutorial instructions are in my blog and I just wanted to show a couple of things. You can see the little stitches and again I did sew this on my machine and it is so much faster than sewing by hand. Um, my machine has a button sewing um, mode and it allows you to lower the press the feed dogs so that it doesn't advance the fabric and then basically you just set it to a zigzag stitch and just set it really small and then it just goes back and forth a couple of times it makes these nice little stitches and for Addie's I did leave a string in between sorry you can't I did leave a thread you don't have to do that I usually don't this is the first time I did this but I just thought it added a, a little nicer effect and so I decided to do that. And there's also instructions for how to make this corner. Um, it just gives your mattress a little depth rather than just being a pillow. This is the decorative pillow. It's copying the one that they sell uh, with Be Forever Addy. And my daughter really liked it, so she wanted one for this one too, even though we made the red quilt, not the blue Be Forever quilt. Um, and I'm not sure, this might be the first time I did a pillow with ruffles, and I think it came out okay. Um, I just took a one inch strip for the ruffle, I folded it in half, and I sewed down along the edge, and then I gathered it to create the ruffle, and then I laid the ruffle on one side of the pillow and just stitched it down and you might want to use a zigzag stitch or some stitch that encases the seam 
um, it wanted to fray a lot and I needed to do that just to make it a little more secure. Once the ruffle was sewed to one side of the pillow, then I was able to put the two together with the ruffle on the inside and just stitch around the edge and then you leave it open and when you turn it around, um, turn it inside out, the ruffle is there. And then I did, I did machine stitch it closed, it just seemed to be a little easier and more secure. There you can see. And there's where I joined it. I just did it sort of like you're doing a, a binding on a quilt, but I just sewed it together and then kind of sewed across the opening. And now I get to talk about the quilt, which I'm so excited about. I think it came out so well. And it's just really neat to have a miniature version of Addie's quilt. Um, I did not do the ruffled edge that the 18 inch quilt has. I started to do it and I, I had it all figured out but then um, it just wasn't working the way that I wanted it to and it was late at night and it was taking a long time and I just decided to go without it and so I just sewed the back right on and I think it's okay because I think it would have made it just a little bit too long on the sides and my daughter doesn't seem to mind and I think it's still very cute. Um, so in my blog there are instructions for making the quilt. Each square is two inches square so it was cut out um, two and a half inches to allow for the seam allowance. These strips I cut out one inch with, so there's a quarter inch seam allowance on either side and they came out to be half an inch. And again, there's instructions on how to sew it together in the blog. And then once the front piece was all quilted, I just put a, I cut a piece of this black gingham fabric to match the front and I just put good side to good side, sewed around the edge left an opening and I turned it and after I turned it I did slide in a piece of felt to be the batting. Um, it does make it a little stiffer. You could make the blanket without the felt and with it being for a doll I'm sure it would be just fine um, and it might hang over the bed a little bit nicer. I'm always Never sh I'm never sure whether I should use batting for these small quilts or not. Um, maybe next time I make one, I'll try it without batting. But And then after I sewed it all together with the felt inside, I, I machine stitched it closed. And I usually hand sew these things, but I noticed that American Girl just uh, machines sews their things closed and so I thought I would give it a try too. And after that, after that I machine quilted around each square. So I basically went around the whole thing and then I just sewed down each line here and here. And I used red thread, and I think the effect turned out rather nicely. So I hope you enjoyed our video of Mini Addie's Bed, and I hope that it inspires you to craft and create for your mini dolls.